Spotlight on those who served. Kirkwood native and U.S. Navy Vietnam veteran Frank Jones says he's an unlikely military success story because he's never liked anyone telling him what to do. But his year of duty as a boat captain in Vietnam is noteworthy for a very important reason. He never lost a crew member. Although he's been diagnosed with PTSD, Frank says he had an easier time adjusting to life after war than most Vietnam veterans, thanks in large part to what happened the day he returned home in the summer of 1970. The neighbors that have known me forever uh, threw me a parade on the street with kids. Uh, my younger sister, who was 13 years younger, cut up confetti. And so kind of I, w I was done. I, I had a parade, and I had a baby, and I had to go to work and pay bills. How much do you think that parade helped you? A lot. A year earlier, Frank found himself assigned to one of these high-powered armored troop carriers that patrolled the smaller tributaries of deep south Vietnam. These little black dots right here are the two main places I was, so you couldn't get much farther south. In the summer of 1969, Frank's boat captain had lost his crew's confidence. They pleaded for a new captain, and Frank's fellow river rats told their commanding officer Frank was the man for the job. And my crew decided, they said, Frank will do it. He's the oldest, he's married, he's got a kid on the way, so he's a grown up. So Frank will do it. And um, that was it. And we went to um, the officer and lieutenant, and he said, if you guys are all good with that, Frank's boat captain. The crew's nightly 14 hour mission was to patrol the Mekong Delta backwaters and make sure the troops and supplies did not reach the enemy. By his count, Frank and his crew of six to eight men were engaged in more than 100 firefights in his year-long tour. We would just be shooting. You know, you would see something coming from the right where that's where you shot. And, and they had uh, something called B-40 rockets. Um, these rockets would hit the boat, explode, and then burn through steel and throw shrapnel inside the boat. Four months into his tour, Frank's first child was born in St. Louis. He made sure he and his crew had a daily reminder what was at stake for him. I'd get Polaroid pictures of my son, and, uh, and I had them taped along the bulkhead on the inside of the boat, and we would laugh because you know how Notre Dame hits their sign when they're going to play football? I'd tap my son's picture every night. Every night I'd go over and I'd go, and then one of the other guys in the boat would come over and tap the picture. Frank did make it home to his son. In fact, Frank and his wife Linda, who'd been married 53 years, raised three kids and are now grandparents. None of the crew on Frank's boat were injured on Frank's watch. I reached out to Frank's commander, Lieutenant Bill Mesmer, to put that in perspective. He told me Frank was one of his most reliable captains, if not the most reliable boat captain he commanded. He says at 23, Frank was younger than most of his boat captains, but was mature beyond his years. I want to thank uh, photographer Britt Reese and the greatest editor in America, Krista Olberg, for helping me tell Frank's story. Great to meet Frank. Great to be able to, be able to tell his story. Wonderful story.